What would happen if you injected hot sauce into your veins? Ah, dude, what's with the jump scare? I'm Josh Cottle. I'm a science communicator and anatomy teacher, and this is episode one of Rogue Anatomy, a series where I take crazy questions from the comments, taboo subjects, or things that are just fun to talk about, and expose them to a bit of science. To figure out what's gonna happen when we put this plethora of peppers in your plasma, we have to know what's in a hot sauce. Of course, there's going to be some kind of hot pepper. There's also going to be a bit of salt that acts as a flavoring enhancer and preservative, and some acid to really balance out that flavor, usually in the form of vinegar. Despite these being incredibly common ingredients found in your food and probably easily available in your kitchen, it is important to remember that the dose makes the poison. And also how it's administered? I think they might be making tobacco. A lot of people don't know that good old household vinegar is strong enough to dissolve the calcium and phosphorus out of human bones. It can eat the enamel off of your teeth, and if taken undiluted, can actually burn your esophagus. In addition to that, some varieties available at the store are so acidic that they can actually be used as a cleaning agent or as a way to kill mold. For our questionable use case, it's important to know that your blood is tightly regulated at a pH level of 7.35 to 7.45, slightly alkaline. And the body, as you might guess, is extremely sensitive to big swings in acidity. This condition is called acidosis if you take it too far. As this relates to our hot shot here, so long as we keep the amount small, at the injection site, there's probably gonna be some stinging. In the blood, there will be some cell death just because of that big swing in pH. But as this dilutes through the bloodstream, it is gonna be far less concerning. And this is because your body has mechanisms to balance out small swings in pH. All right, vinegar's out of the way. Let's talk about the salt. So salt is a weird one. It's the only rock that you eat directly, and a relatively small amount can actually be the end of you. Seriously, this rock rocks hard. It takes just four tablespoons, 25 grams, to summon the reaper. But salt is also an electrolyte. That's a fancy chemical term for a substance that allows electricity to flow in your body. This allows your muscles to move and your brain to do the thinking. If you get really dehydrated and you go into the doctor, they are gonna hook you up and give you a bag of salt water. If your IV bag looks like this, that is incredibly sus. That is unprocessed Capri Sun. I mean, I know they say food is medicine, but this is taking it a little too far. But how much salt is actually in our volcanic vaccine? Well, it turns out that it's not that much. So first thing, it's gonna dilute just like the vinegar did, down to a level that's not all that concerning. Secondly, this is a substance that the body can readily make use of. So in the end, this salt isn't gonna make you all that salty. We've checked off vinegar and salt. That just leaves our fiery friends. The chemical that gives peppers their punch is known as capsaicin. Molecules of capsaicin fit like a key into a lock on a receptor known as TRPV1. But where are these receptors found? If you've ever had hot peppers, you know part of this answer. Ah, uh, this cat is just gonna warm you up to the idea of looking at tongues because human tongues are an acquired taste. And here's a bit of a conversation starter for you. I used this picture kind of willy-nilly, and then I thought after the fact, do cats taste capsaicin? Ah, uh, the internet was not a lot of help because some sites said yes and some sites said no. The thing is, is the answer is either yes or no because they either have this receptor or they don't. What I can say with certainty is you do have the TRPV1 receptor, and you have them on your tongue, in your nose, in the mucous membrane of your eye, actually all your mucous membranes, and your skin and various other parts and places. Some of these places are internal, and that is why when you eat spicy food, it can irritate and inflame your digestive system from top to bottom. If it's coming in hot, it's going out hot. Quick aside, have you ever wondered why plants produce this chemical? Well, just like caffeine, they actually use it as a defense mechanism to keep from being eaten. And as defense mechanisms go, this is a pretty good one because in the animal kingdom, there are only two animals that seek this out. We're one of them and this delightful little thing, which is known as a tree shaw. And get this, 
For many bugs, including bees, it's actually a straight up pesticide. And that's one of the reasons it's popular for gardeners and also used on organic farms. If you're a gardener or you've raised chickens, you might be headed to the comment section to tell me that I'm off my rocker. Because birds certainly eat peppers and they love them. But this isn't an example of predatory behavior. The plant at this point wants to be eaten, and when the bird does so, it actually swallows some of those whole seeds which pass through the digestive tract and then eventually get deposited near and far in a little pile of fertilizer. The reason that birds do not suffer any ill effects from this is that they lack the receptor for all of that heat. But what happens when you inject it into the bloodstream? Well, as you may have guessed, nothing good. See, the inner lining of your blood vessels have the receptors that can react to capsaicin, so it is going to feel like your blood has turned to gasoline, and that gasoline is on fire. Being that capsaicin is both a potent and persistent chemical, it is going to proceed to spread throughout the whole of your circulatory system. Your inner squid beast is going to be flooded with information, and it is going to interpret this information as a threat or bad news. It will then flip all of the panic switches and give you something called a sympathetic nervous response. During this response, a flood of chemicals will enter your bloodstream. Your heart rate will shoot through the roof. Your blood vessels will constrict, and because of that, your blood pressure will rise. You may begin sweating. You may turn pale as your peripheral vessels clamp down and shunt blood towards your core systems. You may get a stomach ache and feel unwell as your digestive system shuts down in a panic. This is a huge amount of stress, and all of these things combined might push you over into full-blown cardiac arrest. Now, you might still be thinking that, ah, it's going to suck, but surely it's not going to kill me. First off, we injected it into your bloodstream. This is what you wanted. It's not like you're doing the one-chip challenge which, coincidentally, is what I will be citing as evidence for capsaicin actually being able to kill you. You may never have wondered or guessed why that challenge just evaporated so suddenly, but that is because it was linked to causing the death of a teenager. Capsaicin's a lot like any chemical. As long as you respect it, you can probably get along with it. But the moment you don't, it can cause all kinds of problems. And while most of the stuff on this list is not going to kill you, it also doesn't sound very pleasant. After all of this, it might surprise you to find out that capsaicin is actually used as a medicine. And this is what happens when you take that chemical respect and combine it with the willingness to experiment on people. Take this cream, for instance. If you are an older individual, you may be familiar with this medication. If you're younger, you will eventually be familiar with this medication. What you may not know is that this contains capsaicin at a 0.1% formulation or mixture. And counterintuitively, it is used to treat pain. Generally, like arthritis, joint pain, it's the complaints of the overworked and the old. But it may seem weird to use something that causes pain to treat pain. And honestly, that is an astute observation. But the thing that capsaicin can do is actually cause nerve ablation. So it can rewire or burn off the ends of the nerves that normally send nociception, a fancy word for pain. It's also sometimes called a counter irritant, which is best described as when you scratch an itch, like an itch is annoying, so you scratch on it and you get some temporary relief. But this is more long lasting than that. But this is only 0.1%. What if we went full mad scientist, cranked it up by 800 times, maybe got some clinical trials and some of that sweet, sweet big pharma money? Well, my friends, you would end up with a clinical strength medication that is so strong that they have to numb the area or possibly put you to sleep with conscious sedation before they put it on. I legitimately want to know what the pitch deck or the boardroom meeting looks like when something like this gets kicked around for the first time. And if you think this sounds crazy, you're not the only one. But sometimes when you have crazy conditions, uh, you need a crazy solution. 
I always have one more crazy thing for you, and that is this. They are actually testing injectable capsaicin for osteoarthritis. So in the joint, they're going to inject capsaicin and basically find out what it does. To be clear, this is not an approved treatment. It is not a medication yet. It is distinctly in the FAFO phase of development and exploration. Now it is time for the best part of the video. No. Not the end. This is where I ask you to leave an idea for a video and also ask you if you found Waldo. And of course, when does a joke become a dad joke? During the delivery, it becomes apparent. If you want to see more of this awfulness, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the dumb little bell. As always, thanks for learning with me, and I'll see you next time.